running, guys. Can you hear me okay? Hello, can you guys hear me? Mic check. No. Morning, yes, sir. Oh, okay. Hey, where is everyone? Does anybody know? Well, it's 11 11, so the last time we had a bit of a late start because of um, the difference in, um, in time zone in where I am. I didn't realize you guys were all up behind. So this time, we want to try to get the maximum time. So. I'm wondering if you guys can send out a um a reminder. Um normally you have your WhatsApp groups and so forth. If you can send out a reminder to say hey class is starting. Alright, I'm just gonna give it just a couple more minutes and then we will roll out. Alright.
All right. Okay, welcome guys to another DDM class. Full of excitement and fun. Hmm. I wonder which hurricane is passing. Why they are um half the class members here. Or maybe the others are on their way to class. You know, they they are virtually walking to class, so they haven't gotten here yet, right? <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome back. Um, how is your um let's see. Oh, so you, you finish one project. When is your next studio crit, by the way? Anybody want to volunteer um, that info? I think it's next week, Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday coming is our interim. Oh, wow. They're moving quick, man. Kadinti, you just finished one. Uh, when was it? Last week. And then it's another one this week. Cool. What's the topic of this um critique? Uh, of climate. this project? Climate. Ah, uh, this is your climate project. Ah, I'm telling you, it brings back memories. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. I remember I did my climate project. How did I do it again? I don't remember. I think I did it on the computer. I think I modeled it. But then I had to print it and trace it because we we could only use hand drawing for this one. So I think I, or I modeled the, the the shell of it, I think. And then the rest of it I did as a sketch. I like, can barely remember. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Good stuff. All right, well, wish you all the best with that one. Speaking of modeling, um, today is where we switch gears from 2D into 3D, right? So we've been using a lot of 3D applica 2D applications lately, um, the Photoshop and the um, the Illustrator, right? And I hope you guys have been having fun with that. Um, and now we're going to move into um, the world of 3D, right? And I'm going to do my best to kind of carry you from the 2D world into the 3D world, right? Um, um, the let me try and think. Do you should have Illustrator installed already, right? So, it's I'm going to require you to have Illustrator open, and most importantly, today is when we'll move into SketchUp, right? So, you're ideally you're going to need the, the, the installation version of SketchUp now. SketchUp has three versions. One of them has been deprecated, right? And when I say deprecated, it means that it still exists, but they no longer support that version. You know, like, like Windows um, 7. You know, Windows 7 still exists, but um, Microsoft doesn't give any more security updates for Windows 7, right? So... You have a version of SketchUp that has been deprecated and they don't even make it available on the website anymore. But I mean, you can still get it. And it's called SketchUp Make. It's 100% free, right? Then you have the web. Okay, let me show you that version. Um, I'm also going to look for it here. Let me tell you where you can get it. Here we go. All right. I'm going to put it in the chat. Come on. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's put it in the chat. There we go. I'm going to put it in the chat. I hope it's still on that website, right? Then I'm also, oh, let me also put it in the, in the Zoom chat group, the team chat as well. Let me 
if I can locate it. Oh, there we go. Right, so it's also in the the team chat, right? All right, so um, you have a version that is in no the the second version is the web version. Um, let me see if I can give you an example of that. Right, so if you go to if you just type SketchUp, right? Oh, you're gonna go to SketchUp. Too. Okay, fine. All right. Um, all right. So if you go to SketchUp's website, there we go. It should look something like this, and. Then where you go is you go to start modeling or try SketchUp thing, right? And where do you normally go for personal projects? And then you go to SketchUp free. You can click that. And then it will load a web version of SketchUp. So that is the other version. Now this version, of course, it will just run in your browser. No problem. And it will open all the latest versions. So there, that is SketchUp running in my browser. And the last version of SketchUp is SketchUp Pro. Right? Now, this is the one that I'm going to recommend that you use, right? Now, remember, you can always talk to Mr. Campbell about helping you to get the setup with the software. Now, if you don't um if you don't have SketchUp Pro it's better for you to install SketchUp Make, right? Rather than use the the um the web version. All right. So I give you the link. Hopefully that download still works. I want you guys to download SketchUp Make because you'll be able to follow along um, with that one. All right. All right. Any questions? You guys hearing me? Yes, sir, we're hearing you. Sorry, I'm hearing you. Okay, good. Thanks for the confirmation. All right. So let's take a look on where we're coming from. Now, the last thing that we used was Illustrator, right? And I'm just going to open a random file here. I'm going to open a new page in Illustrator. Now, Illustrator is basically a 2d program right now one of the tools that you probably used a lot let me see in your last two exercises right is going to be the pen tool right so for example um, um if i grab my pen tool which is right here second. Oh. All right, so this is how I have my windows set up. I like to float one of the windows here. And then have my window here. Right. So there I go. So my pen tool, um, which is that. I'm able to, you know, click and draw lines, right? Of course, so you guys know this already. And with my direct selection tool, which is here, 
I'm able to select those points and move it around, right? So you would have had to do this in order to do exercise three, right? Now, there is a reason why I'm bringing this back up, right? And what I would like is for one of you to demonstrate something for me. Oh, by the way, guys, um, we will talk about the um, the class activity that I gave you guys. We'll talk about that in the other session that we have later, uh, that we have after this, after we take the five minute break. All right. So don't worry about that. If you have questions relating to that, we'll deal with that a little later. Okay. So, right. So who has Illustrator up on their screen? Anybody? Hello. Nobody has Illustrator open? Yes, sir. Um, I just opened up mine. All right, cool. All right. Now, what? All right, is it up now? You have it on a blank page? Uh, yes, sir. All right, cool. All right. This is what I want you to test out with Illustrator, right? Now we're going to make something up randomly to draw with the pen tool, right? And we're going to start with... Um... Okay, let's start with a uh, letter, right? Um, let's start with the letter E. So... We're just going to take the pen tool and we're just going to, you know, sketch it. All right. So I'm holding shift and I'm just sketching here. And I'm just making this up like I'm not, there's no particular measurements or anything. And I'm going to close it like that. There we go. Letter E. Very simple. Using the pen tool. I want you to demonstrate that for me. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and you share your screen. All right? All right, yes, yes. All right, cool. There we go. All right. All right. So go right ahead. So grab the pen tool. And just make it up out of your head. Now, you're, you're holding the shift icon, right? The shift yes, button. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, to get it straight. All right, so go ahead and do your thing. I think Garden should get extra bonus class participation percentage. What do you think, Garden? It's only fair, right? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pretty simple, right? Yes, sir. Right. And I mean, just using the pen tool, you can sketch stuff out really quickly. Um, uh, let's try something maybe a little more challenging. Try like uh, the, the letter X. So I just move this. Cool. Anybody else has Illustrator open? It's loading, sir. It's loading? All right. Let's give him a chance. All right, cool. Good enough, good enough, good enough, good enough. All right. All right. I have one more challenge to throw out. And this one, anybody that has Illustrator open, right? I want you to do this for me. I just want you to do a screen clip and throw it on the mirror board. All right. 
All right, so everybody revving up their Illustrator engines. I'll give you about 10 seconds to have your Illustrator up, all right? Let's see who we can have sketch this out first for me. All right, going once, going twice. And I'm going to stick it in the chat, by the way, guys. There you go. All right, Garden. What I want you to do is to grab the picture from the chat, just control C, and then just stick it on your um stick it on your um yeah, there you go. All right. Now here's the trick. You're not gonna trace it because we already know how to trace, because we did that in exercise three, right? So I want you to put it to the side. Let's put it to the side. And I want you to use some lines and just sketch out the basic outline. You don't have to go in detail with all of the... Hold on, which one did I send? Uh, yeah, you don't have to go in detail with all of the things. Just try and freehand sketch it. All right, sir. Is there anybody else attempting to do this? Remember, you can use multiple Sorry. lines. So you, you don't have to like use it in all one go. You can draw and then you just press escape and then you continue from that point and draw again. Who, who had a question for me? No, sir, it wasn't a question. I was just saying it. I was attempting it too. All right, cool. Oh. <laughs> so you know what you have to do you have to start from well start from the last line that you drew and then you have to use the direct selection tool to to move that um that line All right because if you use the pen tool you're going to continue it oh that's what you're doing okay fine remember if you click and drag you're going to get a curve it's if you it's click it's once it's you get a corner awesome Anybody else reach further than garden? No? I can only share one screen at a time, guys. So. <laughs> Well, Garden, I thought you'd draw one line and just change it to a dash line. Hmm, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. No. But this this is this is this is pretty good enough, right? This is pretty good enough. All right, cool. Just uh do, by the way, do you know the shortcut to take a screenshot? It is Windows key shift and S. Yeah. S as in snake. All right. Windows key shift and S. And if you have the newer version of um Windows, I think they changed it to the print key, the print screen key. All right. All right. Now here's the it now you don't have to put the lines in there. That's fine. Oh, you can end it here. All right. All right. Anybody else managed to attempt this so far? All right. Take a screen clip and drop it on the mirror board. And, and you know, just in case your computer crash or something, just like save this file to the desktop. All right. All right. <laughs> so, you know, right. All right. So I want you to so keep your illustrator open. Right. Yeah. And then what I want you to do is stop sharing your screen. All right. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go to the mirror board, I think. Oh, I haven't shared my screen yet. Where are you, Zoom? All right, there we go. Now, I'm just going to stick this in an empty spot here. All right. I grabbed a screenshot for your garden, so it's fine. So, that's that shot there. And let me put this. That. All right. Now, I hope you other guys that are here are paying attention. Because what I'm about to show you is one of the reasons why we use SketchUp. And I think it's one of those reasons that a lot of us, um, like one of the main uh, advantages of using SketchUp, a lot of us don't necessarily take advantage of, especially in architecture school, right? So this was a sketch that was done digitally and it was fairly okay. You use lines and you draw it and everything. Uh, we also did the letter, uh, two letters, right? So we did that as well. All right, so... Um, I'm so, well, I don't need to take a screenshot of the letters because you guys know your alphabet already, right? Now, what I want us to do for those of you who have SketchUp up and running, right? Um, how do I reset my Mm, I guess I can't really do that. Okay, I was looking to because my SketchUp doesn't look like you. Okay, when you open SketchUp, your SketchUp looks like yeah. This is pretty much how your SketchUp perhaps look, right? And I confirm that with everybody because there are like many different versions. Anybody have SketchUp open currently? Either the Make version that I sent you guys a link to or the Pro version if you already have that installed. Does anybody have SketchUp open? Yes, sir. I have it open, sir. Okay, garden. Cool. And it, does it look kind of like this one? Well, as a, well, when you start to yes, but my SketchUp has a lot of plugins, so it looks kind of different. All oh, right. Okay. So you already use SketchUp to do other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have SketchUp today? You know, the day that we are supposed to be doing a SketchUp exercise. And everybody. No, sir. I just downloaded, sir. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah, sir. Right. Man, looks similar to what you have. All right. Lovely. 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 All right. So now, for those of you who have Sketch, well, even those of you who are like SketchUp experts, because by the way, guys, I am so not a SketchUp expert. Uh, where's my mouse? Give me one second here. Um, let me get my other mouse. One second. Sir, we're using um, meters or centimeters or inches or I'm gone. Come in. Come in. Nope. I am right here. Um, it doesn't matter which one. It doesn't matter. So just pick the first one, which I think is inches. Or you can yes, use millimeters. Sir. It doesn't it doesn't uh, matter in this. All right. Now what I have here in my hand which is a bit far from the camera so probably you can't see it um let me show you a picture of it up close oh 
What I have here is a 3D mouse. It looks kind of like this. Oh, this is the Amazon. It costs a bit of money. I mean, this is actually cheap. Well, this is the not the wireless version. So yeah, it costs like almost $200 for a mouse. Can you guys believe that? All right. Can you guys see it? It looks something kind of like this. Yes, sir. And as in, we are seeing on your screen, sir, or just the picture where you're showing? As in, on my shared screen, because it's like oh, really small oh, yes, sir. for the camera screen, right? And there are different versions. Here's another version, and this one costs more than five hundred dollars US, right? So, well, those are you who have nice gaming stuff. You might say, oh, but you know, gaming mouses are expensive. This is not a gaming mouse, and it you do, this mouse you don't move around. As a matter of fact, um, if I go to their website, I think they show you how. So this looks like something that NASA would use. <laughs> now the reason I'm showing you is because some of you like to um are very much SketchUp users. And some of you use SketchUp hard, and some of you going you use it even harder. And uh, these guys have the patent for this mouse, so that's why you're not seeing it anywhere else. There's a picture that shows um that shows the layout on the okay, right. This is good enough. So this is kind of like how they market it to be used. Let me go open image in the tab. Right. So you have your laptop. With your keyboard you have a regular mouse on the right hand side and then you have this 3d mouse on the left hand side right pretty cool right uh, i know and the, the weird thing is that of course we all have two hands but we have three devices here so you might be saying how in the world are we going to use three devices so of course i'm not like i don't work at this place but i'm just pointing out to you because for those of you who do a lot of 3d um it might be worth getting into because um i tried it out just like about two years ago i think like during covid because i've always seen it and i'm like why would i get a 3d mouse the mouse works fine and keyboard shortcuts and all of that and you know now i basically can't live without it once i'm in a 3d seat right so anyway i'm going to be using it here and if you notice all i can show you is that if you notice how I am orbiting around the scene. It looks very different than how I would orbit around a regular scene. Let me see if I can Sir, find... Sir, it looks uh... smoother because uh, the most my right. cars. Let me see if I can just find a random project. Right, so this is something from the warehouse that I download. And I'm using the 3D mouse now. And I don't know if you... For those of you who use SketchUp before, you know, you can... If I wanted to zoom right into this section here, I have complete control. If I wanted to go inside the building, okay, let me go around here. I'm gonna have to slow probably because of the screen share, but there you go. Have you ever tried to manipulate your SketchUp, you know, your zooming, rotating, or whatever? So this is like the ultimate control um, that lets you just like go right in and if i wanted to look at this very carefully and just just rotate this very ever so slightly you know i can do all of this here so anyway every time i use sketchup persons always ask me sir how you get this thing to look so smooth or whatever i say it's because of the 3d mouse i'm just telling you this from before so those of you who are like avid sketchup users that are into 3d um might be a good investment because the cheapest one is 170 dollars which is not really cheap but that's the cheapest one <laughs> and then it goes up from then other than that um we're going to go into the regular controls which is what you see on screen which you normally use the middle mouse button to orbit now we're not going to jump in 3d just yet so what i want you guys to do is open sketchup can be any dimensions any um units uh, I'm going to just reset this seed. Right. And what I want you to do is I want you to go to and I'm going to come back to 
somebody else's screen for them for you guys to volunteer, right? So just um get your sketch up ready. What I want you to do is go to camera, standard views, and go to top. And then I want you to go to camera. No, where is it again? Um view. Where are you perspective? All right. I go to camera again and then choose parallel projection. So I want you guys to be on parallel projection. Now, I don't want you to orbit in 3D. I just want you to be in a top view like this. And you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And if I hold shift, is it shift? Is it shift? Um, shift and middle mouse button. Yes, I will pan. So those are the only two tools we're going to be using. So we're not going to be in 3D. So we're going to go... So if you pull the middle mouse button, you're going to orbit, which is bad. So you might have to go back to camera and go back to, uh, where is it? Camera and go to standard views and go to top. I wish there was a shortcut. Anybody know a shortcut for that? No? Nope. Okay. All right. Okay, who wants to volunteer their SketchUp screen for me? Anybody? Nobody wants to get bonus participation grade? Nobody? Nobody? Sir, I'll try. Maybe. <laughs> All right, before you share your screen, um... What I want you to do is you go to your, um, there is a tool that's going to be here in SketchUp. That's called your um, pencil tool, right? And I want you to click that. And I want us to repeat the same process. You can ignore the person standing there for now. I want you to do the same process. I want you to draw using the same kind of method methodology, right? I'm holding shift and I'm drawing the letter E just the same, right? Not in 3D, but in like top view. Right? And you can just eyeball it. Right? Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Who wants to volunteer this one? Who was it that said? Sir, I said it. I'll try. All right, cool. All right, Antonio. So go ahead and share your SketchUp screen. Hold on, so I have to change something in the system preferences are coming. <laughs> no problem. For those of you who have SketchUp already up, so remember, um, go to camera, change it to Parallel projection, then go to camera and go to top view. And I want us to draw the letter E just like what we did before. So we said the letter E. That's it. That's what you see. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen, but letter E, a capital E for egg or enemy. In 3D. Right. So, right. So, 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 what you're going to do, sir? I'm not okay, seeing Anton. the top view option. Right. So, Ant oh, Antonio, what are you on? Are you on a uh, Mac or? I'm on oh, Mac. Sharing... Oh, right. So, if you're on Mac, then you need to go up to the top top menu at the, you know, where you have the Mac um icon in camera. Right, and then change it to parallel projection. So, go ahead and do that. All right, sir. All right, good. Then the E, the letter E that you're going to draw is going to be the thick one, meaning that it must have thickness to it. Just like the one that we drew before. So I want you to try and sketch it, sketch it out for me. So delete those lines. All right, go again. So you're just sketching randomly. So, so remember, you're drawing a thick 
E. And you would do before what you did, where you hold shift and there you go. All right. Who was saying they wasn't seeing the parallel projection? Me, I didn't see the top the top view option that you were referring to. You found it? Uh, no, I you... did not. Okay, you're using Mac or PC? PC. Right, so you don't see file edit view. Hold on, are you using the web version or the... It's on the laptop, sir. So... Right. So you you are you seeing file edit view camera at the top of your SketchUp screen? Yes, sir. Right. So go to camera. Camera. I wonder if, I wonder if they change it up for you. Yeah, go to camera. And then you're not under standard views. Oh, I was screen. not uh, oh, oh okay. All right. All so right, you never so. said that part. Sorry, my bad. Standard views. All right. Wasn't detailed, and it's still on parallel projection, right? Yep. Right. Okay. We're gonna draw Thank the you. Just to save. All right, Antonio. Looks like you're doing okay. Now, what I want you to do is, um, pull that screen right there, and I'm gonna share back my screen now. I'll come back to you. All right, sir. Just a bit. All right. All right. So most of you should have something looking like this, right? And what I want to do is I want to show you. I'll pull this to the side here. And then I'm going to pull this, this to this side. Oops, not you. I'm going to pull this to this side here. Pull this over here. All right. Oops. Keep doing that because I keep using middle mouse button here. Shift. Shift and middle mouse button to pan. And in Illustrator, it's space and left click to pan. So yeah, that's super confusing. But anyway, no, I wanted to show you this because to tell you that in Illustrator, you draw with vector lines, but you draw only in a 2D plane, right? Now in SketchUp, you also draw with vector lines, but the difference is that you're in 3D, but the process of doing it is the same. So, Garden, you just drew the letter E and stuff like that. And you realize that when you went over to SketchUp, you go to a top view, parallel projection. You could almost say you're using Illustrator because you're using the pen tool and you're drawing lines and attaching them together and putting them at different angles. It's still lines. And that's what I'm getting at to say that the building blocks of 3D is really those vector lines that you have been already using right and just like how you can you can jump into illustrator and sketch out something flat with your pen tool you can do the exact same thing in sketchup just the same but the difference is that it is now in 3d so for those of you who have the letter e up now if you grab the middle mouse button and then click hold, click and hold the middle mouse button and move it, then you realize that you're in a completely three-dimensional environment, right? So you're in a complete 3D environment. And this is where you start to depart away from what you can do with Illustrator, right? And for those of you who are like Illustrator experts, yes, Illustrator does have a, and Photoshop, they have a 3D options, but it is nowhere as flexible as using a 3D program, right? And always remember this, guys, a program will always boast to do everything, right? But it's usually targeting a particular activity. So just because PowerPoint 
can also have 3D objects. It don't mean that you should start modeling in PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying? And by the way, PowerPoint does have 3D in there now, right? Which is, you know, but yeah, don't, don't model your project in PowerPoint. And it's the same thing. So what we saw example a while ago is that if we were to sketch out something in 2D that requires line work, then yeah, Illustrator, no problem. It's me. But we can now do this in SketchUp as well. So think as SketchUp as Illustrator plus, you know what I mean? A 3D version of Illustrator, all right? Now I want to kind of introduce us a little bit to some components of 3D. When we work in 3D software, we digitally represent the natural world, which can be measured along three dimensions. We have left and right, up and down, and back and forth. These three dimensions are called axes and are usually defined as X, Y, and Z. We use these axes as a way of measuring and navigating our virtual 3D world. These axes can be used to measure the position of objects, the size of objects, or they can measure the distance between objects. Imagine a city with tall buildings. The grid of the city represents two of the three axes. Any intersection in the city could be described via two numbers. For example, we could go to the building at the corner of third and fourth. The floors of this building would be considered the third axis in our 3D world. So a coordinate of three, four, five could be seen as the fifth floor of the building at the intersection of third and fourth. In a 3D application, this same measurement system is how we manipulate objects. When we move an object in 3D, we think of it as moving in a straight line, but the 3D application itself measures its distance along X, Y, and Z. Similarly, when we scale objects to make them bigger or smaller, we measure the change in size along X, Y, and Z. And when we rotate objects, we can measure that rotation as happening along a combination of the X, Y, and Z axes. As you can see, our natural world can be described using three sets of numbers. Understanding this coordinate system is the first step to working in 3D. All right. Now I want to show you something else. When we work in a 3D application, we're typically working in what's called a viewport. Now, our viewport is simply a 2D window onto our 3D world. Now, this window can be configured to view our scene in a number of different ways. So, for example, if we want, we can take the scene and view it in what's called wireframe. Now, these wires are basically the geometry of our scene. Now, if we want to go even simpler, we can go into what's called a bounding box mode, which basically just shows broad outlines of the objects in our scene. Now, typically, we want to see the shapes of our objects, so we can also do what's called smooth shading. Now, smooth shading allows us to see the shape of our objects. And if we want, we can also do things such as superimpose our wireframes over our shaded view to give a better sense as to where the detail of our geometry is lying. Now in addition to this we can also add color. So if we want we can add color and texture as well as lighting. Now some of these features are software dependent so each application will be a little bit different but all of the major applications will allow you to see your scene in multiple ways. Now, because we're viewing our 3D scene in a flat 2D window, we will need to navigate. Now, again, every software is a little bit different, but they all have pretty much the same navigation controls. So typically, we'll have something that allows us to orbit or rotate the scene. And in fact, what we're doing here is we're rotating a virtual camera around the scene. 
Now, if you can picture in your head a camera that's moving, this will give you a better sense as to how to navigate your scene. We can also take our camera and move it around to adjust where it's looking in the scene. And we can also push our camera back and forth. Now this is called a truck, so we can truck in or truck out. Now because we're viewing this through a virtual camera, we can do things such as change the angle of view or the focal length of our virtual camera. So we can zoom in and see this very closely, or we can zoom out and again, we're just changing the focal length of the camera. So this is like having a camera with a zoom lens. Now, in addition to this 3D view or perspective or camera view of the scene, we can also view the scene from a 2D perspective. This is called an orthographic view. Now, for example, if we want to view the scene from the side, we can go into an orthographic view of the side, and this gives a parallel projection. In other words, this is looking at the scene directly from the side where everything is perpendicular and parallel. Now, in addition to this, we can also look at another view, such as a top view. And again, these views give us more specific views on our scene that may allow us to adjust and manipulate the objects in the scene more precisely. But the ultimate goal of this is usually to get into the perspective view and be able to adjust the camera so that we can take a picture of it or render the scene. So when you work in a 3D package, you're going to be manipulating your objects in what are called viewports. Now these viewports can be configured to have multiple views and we can also change the angle of view and perspective of our camera. When we work Right. Now, most of the things that we are looking at here are going to be, um, it applies to all 3D programs. All right. And if you realize some of the things that we've just set up a while ago, um, some of the things could not apply to Illustrator. Right. So right away, we understand that we are like in a virtual environment and we can orbit things around or move things around. All right. All right. Now we have, I want to show you guys two more. Two more short clips just so that you can um, get an understanding of 3D. When we work in... Okay, there we go. All right. D, the concept of zero is completely relative. Most 3D software will have an origin to the 3D world. This origin has the coordinates of zero, zero, and zero. We can measure any object's position relative to this origin. But the origin is really just an arbitrary point in space that was defined by the software. Many times this predefined coordinate system does not serve our needs, so we can create another. Let's go back to our virtual city. Preston is on the fifth floor of a building at 3rd and 4th. He wants to travel to work on the first floor of a building at 2nd and 5th, and wants to know how to get there. If we just use the world coordinates, then telling him how to get there requires a bit of math. Now that's too complicated. A simpler way is to use Preston as our center and tell him to go five floors down, one block over, and one block up. This simplified method uses what is called a local coordinate system. The measurements are taken relative to Preston's center rather than the world. 
In 3D software, we can create multiple coordinate systems in a similar way, each helping you to measure what you need when you need it. Here we have world space, which is measured from the origin of the world. We also have object space, which gives each object its own center, often called a pivot. This gives the object a rest or zero position relative to the world. If we move the object from this default position, we see that it moves relative to zero in object space, but relative to the world in world space. So in effect, each coordinate system places zero at a different place and measures from there. So as you can see, the concept of zero is relative to how you define it. 3D software allows you to use multiple coordinate systems to best suit your needs. When we work in a 3D application, we usually manipulate objects by moving them, rotating them, and scaling them. Now this is pretty straightforward. We can select an object and we can move it. Now typically we can move it along any one of the three axes. So the red axis is typically the X axis. The green axis is Y, and the blue axis is Z. Now we can also move it in a freeform fashion, or we can move it along a plane. Now some of this will depend on the software. Now we can also rotate objects, and again we can rotate them along specific axes, or we can rotate them freeform or we can rotate them perpendicular to the view. And scaling is very much the same as moving. We can scale in any one particular axis, or we can scale the whole object up or down. Now when we move and manipulate objects, there are times when we'll need to be very precise. And for that, we usually have a grid which we can use to precisely position objects. We can also turn on what's called a snapping feature that allows us to move and snap to any one of these grid points, any objects, or a number of other things. And these will allow you to precisely place your objects in the scene. Now, as we saw before, there are multiple coordinate systems that we can use to move and manipulate our objects. So in this case, I'm working in what's called world space, which is aligned to the grid of the world. Now, when I change this to object space, notice how the manipulator changes. So for this particular object, the axes are different. So this has a different coordinate system for the object than for the world. Notice how the world green is up, but for the object, green is left and right. And so this will also affect the way that we rotate things. So if I select this object and I go into rotation, green is left and right. And so this will also affect the way that we rotate things. So if I select this object and I go into rotation, notice how the axes change for each rotation. So if I want to rotate this around the green axis, it will change depending upon what coordinate system I'm using. Now one of the things that's also important is the position of the center. So for this object, all right. Okay, now, when we think about some of the stuff that we just saw, right, you can see that SketchUp shows the center of the world with these three lines, right? Can anybody tell me what color is aligned to what axis? Anybody? So red is what axis? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, so, um, red is the x-axis, green is the y-axis, and blue is the z-axis. Right. So z just remember, z always goes up and down. Um, 
maybe you should say in and out, but you get the idea. So for example, in Illustrator, Illustrator, Illustrator only has X and Y axis, no Z axis. Now um, SketchUp has X and Y, but also Z. And Z is what allows us to update this E. And the interesting thing about this, and I want you guys to try this now, is that in SketchUp, you not only can draw on the flat X and Y axis, but in the Z axis as well. And you guys can try this out by starting from here and actually drawing vertically up across. And I'm holding shift just the same. Now, when you're in SketchUp, notice that you get these dash lines that I'm showing you here. Uh, let me maximize this. Oops. You can see these dashed lines, these dotted lines. And these dotted lines, um, which are uh, polar snapping line, it helps you to snap to different surfaces. So how do I know that this line is directly aligned to this corner? Well, if I hold shift, notice that it is locked to the red and red is going as a Z. Uh, sorry, in the a, in a x-axis. And then if I hover to the corner here, it snaps for me. And then I go down and click again. So notice now that this is now snapped that way. All right, pretty cool. And then, so this is now snapped this way. Then I can also fill this in by drawing here. So what I'm sure, and I'm holding shift again. So what I'm showing you guys is that you are now able to draw in three dimensions, which is where this now leaves Illustrator in the dust. Because Illustrator, you can only draw from a top view and draw this way. But in SketchUp, you can now sketch in this view. So what I want you guys to do for me is to try and sketch this E in the third dimension now. So notice how I'm turning it into 3D. Now I know that there are other ways for those of you who are SketchUp experts to draw, to extrude. But the idea of what I'm showing you here is I want you to think about the act of sketching, right? Just like how, um, what was it, Garden um, was drawing the letter E in Illustrator, just using the pen tool and sketching it out, right? That is how I want you to think of SketchUp, that you can just sketch. The only difference is you can sketch in any axis, which is what makes it beautiful, right? So now I'm using the process of sketching, but because it's in 3D, I know um, I have to make sure that things are aligned, right? And in SketchUp, um, you will see each of these get a different color. And if you hold shift, and once you close a polygon, it will get a surface, which is similar in Illustrator. Notice in Illustrator, once you close a, um, a loop or a path, it gets filled with a fill color. And it's the exact same thing in SketchUp. It's just that in this case, this, the fill color is the material, all right? All right, so, so this is what I want us to do. Anybody finish drawing out the E yet in 3D? Now notice when I did this one, it didn't fill. And that is because um, these points are not coplanar. What do I mean by coplanar? Anybody know I'm, what I mean by coplanar? Anybody? Excuse me, no? sir. Is there any yeah. way I can, is there any way I can go back? Cause I kind of sort of maybe accidentally deleted. Um, quite a bit of my E. 
Um, well, I guess you could undo or you can't do that. No, you know. I'm asking us, sir. <laughs> Oh, you can undo, but it's okay. You can just start again. It's just a little. That's no fun. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> right. Now, the reason why this one didn't fill is because this top line here and this, this bottom line here are not parallel. So that is why this space in the middle was not filled, right? And that is the trick that you have to learn to look out for in SketchUp. If two lines are not aligned, then they will not um, fill. So in this case, I would have to undo. What I would probably do is draw this one first and snap it there and then attach it here. Now notice that it filled. Because now this line and this line are both 100% parallel. All right. I hope you guys see that because that is going to catch you many, many times. Right. Now, notice for me to close up the last part of the E, all I need to do is connect this point here to that point. And notice that the entire E closes up. So this is what you guys should have at the end of the day. You should have something like that where all of the sides are completely um, closed up. Sir, can you do that again, that last step where you filled up all the E at the top part? Right. So you would have something like this remaining. And then what you would do now is because you don't need to trace over these lines here. All you would need to do is just to connect this point here to this point. Because the rest of areas are already traced already. But once you do that, SketchUp will automatically fill in the rest of points. Because once, once a surface is closed, SketchUp is going to fill it. So for example, if I drew a shape like this and I left it like that, SketchUp is not going to fill this shape. Uh, Illustrator would attempt to fill it, but you will still see a missing line. Once you connect this missing line, then SketchUp will fill it. Right? And this acts just like the fill and stroke in, in Illustrator. All right? So what if I never wanted the top to be filled? Like, what if I wanted, like, a courtyard for my E? Well, in that case, you would just use the selection tool, right? That is here. You just use the selection tool, click the top of the E and press delete. And there you go. Now, one of the beauty of using SketchUp is that you can even sketch on existing surfaces. So for example, if I go for my pen tool again now, I can sketch on this surface here, like a door or something. And then if I use my selection tool, I can click this actually, this, this is not parallel because the last part of my E was slightly lean. So let me use a side that's completely parallel, like this side, right? If I sketch on, on a surface here, I can use my selection tool and I can click inside this area here, different from outside. So I could actually click this and delete it like that. Right, which is pretty cool. So it the idea what I'm getting here is that notice that all I'm doing is sketching. Which, was, which is a process that in a digital realm, you guys need to know how to do. Um, you can sketch something in real life, take it into a digital program and then digitize it, right? Or you could just sketch it directly in the digital program if you are proficient enough, right? So, so for example, Garden, he sketched an E in SketchUp, right? And Antonio 
he sketched the E in, sorry, Garden sketched the E in Illustrator and Antonio sketched the E in SketchUp. And when I say the word sketch, it means that it's free form. You're just thinking about something and representing it um, using a tool. And this, just the name of the program, SketchUp, is like the, the whole essence of it is that you're supposed to be sketching with it. Just like how you sketch this E just now. All right. All right. All right. So what we're going to do at this point um, is we're going to just take a five minute break. You know, get some lunch, get some water or something. And then um, and then we're going to come back and jump into today's exercise. All right. And today's exercise is going to be with SketchUp. All right. So for those of you who are installing SketchUp, just finish installing it. All right. All right. Right before you go for your break, though, everyone is supposed to have finished the assignment. Right. Right. So the assignment, that, not the assignment. Sorry, I shouldn't call it assignment. It's a class activity. Right. So that class activity will be closed at the end of the day today so if you want to lock in your participation grade um, um well i guess after class you can just hurry up and finish it up before the form closes all right all right all right so we're going to take a five minute water break and come back
right, we're back. All right, welcome back, guys. Can you hear me? All systems yes, nominal. Yes, All right, sir. Cool. All right, so I hope everybody took a little time to get their SketchUp installed. We're gonna jump right into into um, exercise five, which is gonna be the last of this series of exercises. Um, our next step, we're going to, our next assignment is going to be the portfolio assignment. Um, and for that, we're going to be using InDesign and doing some other awesome stuff. So just as a quick heads up for next week or so. Yeah, for next week. So let's jump into today's exercise in SketchUp. Okay, so welcome to exercise five. And as per usual, if you log on to the DDM site, navigate down to exercise five. Um, so you're not, not seeing the video, exercise right? Exercise five involves using. My bad. Thank you for telling me that. I just realized that I did not turn on the screen share. <laughs> Where are you, screen share? Where are you? You are somewhere. Let me try and find you. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Okay, so welcome to exercise five. Okay. Okay, so okay. <laughs> uh, where is the video? Um, I don't know the video. Yeah. Okay, so welcome to exercise five. And wow. as per usual, if you log on to the DDM site, navigate down to exercise five. Um, you will see that exercise five involves using SketchUp 3D software, and there is also some. Yeah, you're seeing these nice, beautiful colors. Yes, sir. That... Very pretty colors. Yeah, yeah. I think I know why I'm getting those colors because I unknowingly enabled it. <laughs> And now I must knowingly disable it. I was wondering what that button did. And now I know. At least we now know, sir. <laughs> All right. I'm going to disable that. Yeah, good. All right. And yeah. Okay, so welcome to exercise five. And as per usual, if you log on to the DDM site, navigate down to exercise five. Um, you will see that exercise five involves using SketchUp 3D software. 
and there's also some tips and um, descriptions of how to use the application that's on the handout and we are going to do two objects today um, this first object is not to be submitted it's just going to be done in the class and this object here will be the object that will be submitted okay so so we're going to use SketchUp now there are two versions of SketchUp there is the SketchUp um, application which you can load up when you load it up you will get a welcome screen like this and then you will be asked to select a um, a unit you are going to select the millimeters um, version the millimeters unit now the next version of um, SketchUp runs in a browser before I show you that this that you see on screen is the um, application to see the browser version if I bring up a browser type SketchUp in Google and you should get the option well you just click on the first option that comes up then you would go to try SketchUp and then you will see different versions here you could go for the start the free personal projects and just go to start modeling and then you'll be taken to the web version of SketchUp All right and when you go here then you go to create new and there you have it so here we have the web version and the desktop version so you might notice that they look a little different um, these tool icons here are on the side um, however um, for this exercise we will be using the the desktop um, version of SketchUp and not the web version but if you only have the web version you can follow along all right so when you open SketchUp this is what the basic user interface will look like you should have some icons towards the top then you might notice um, you might have a character here for scale and you will notice perhaps a background in this case it is a sky now before we get going with um, with SketchUp I want us to make some quick alterations to the user interface that will make our experience a bit better right and this is why we want to use a desktop version so first I want us to go to camera then I want us to change to parallel projection like that then I want us to go to camera again and go to standard views then select the top view okay great Next. now the good thing is that we kind of did um, most of this already so that is great so we're just gonna jump into the exercise now all right so now when we open a new SketchUp and notice that before we have selected the architectural millimeter um, template now if just in case some of us might not have selected the right um, units we can additionally change the units by going to um, window uh, model info and then you will see units right here and we can actually 
change the units and um, my units is currently set to millimeters and decimals and it is set to display mm like that so that is how i know my units however because i have um because i have um selected the template those were already set up for me if you selected the incorrect template you can just set it up in here you can also change these measurements at any time during your drawing and it will automatically adapt your drawing will not be out of scale all right so I'm gonna close that now to get going here first thing I want to do is remove our um, reference object so I'm gonna just click it notice when I click it you see this blue highlight comes around it so um, this highlight here is known as a component now, how do I know it's, an, it's a component? Well, there is actually information on the objects that you select. And that information is found on our default tray. Remember, that was the tray that we minimized over here for me. So if I maximize that default tray and I pin it, let's pin it there. Notice that any object I select, so I select this object and it tells me some information about it. So it tells me that it is a component, it has a definition, kind of like a name, and that it is untagged here. There's also some options here that you can do to turn it off and link, uh, lock or unlock it and so forth. So that is where I would get model information. Now we don't need this now, so I'm just gonna close that out. And we definitely don't need this model, so I'm just gonna delete it. Now the first thing we need to do is look at some of our dimensions here. So I'm gonna actually zoom in here. And this form of modeling, which is called Um, solid modeling because essentially what we're doing is we're going to create this shape from solids so when beginning to model the first thing we want to do is think of it as creating a sketch and some of us can draw by hand and if we see an image and we want to replicate that as a sketch we kind of picture the image in our minds and then we try to execute that using our hands and drawing the sketch. In this case, it's pretty similar, but instead of using our hands, what we're trying to do is to think about ways that we can construct this Lego block um, together. So let's look at that up close. One approach that we could take to create this Lego block here, and just single it out here. Well, we could draw the base first, so we could draw that. And if we translate this in plan view, it would perhaps look like something like that. Then what we could do is translate these measurements. So these measurements here would be equal to the measurements here and here and so forth. Right, so of course remember that this is the plan view. Then um, also notice that there is a height measurement next. So we could use the push-pull tool to push this shape up to this height. So when you are creating a 3d model and you have to construct it 
this is the kind of mindset that you need to have you need to kind of break down your shape into basic forms and try and create those basic forms then manipulate them to get the details that you want so let us investigate that so let us if we now use this approach we would first need to draw this base here now it is eight millimeters and it is a square so it should work out to eight by eight millimeters now how do you know what is eight millimeters now this is where things might get a little tricky because eight millimeters is actually quite small in comparison to that model that we had so the first thing we could do is we could get our pencil tool then we're going to start from <laughs> let's get our pencil tool in SketchUp there we go we're going to start from the origin here and we are going to well let's let's pencil out our plan first so we want to draw pretty much a shape like that and then we want to use a push pull tool to extrude the shape upwards that is our game plan so in order to do that we are going to first draw that shape now we are going to choose the pencil tool first then we're going to click once now we're going to drag along this red line here and notice when i drag along this red line what happens right and if you look closely you will actually see that when I drag along this line this value here actually changes right so let's look at that again while I'm dragging this line you can see the value here that is changing as we go so right away we can get eight millimeters there because we could simply just type this in so let's explore how we do that now we can clearly see that you know this length is about 300 millimeters so eight millimeters is going to be teeny very tiny so we need to zoom in some more using the mouse wheel there we go and then we can we're basically operating at a kind of a larger scale so now in order to get the eight millimeters you're going to hover along the edge of this red line then you're going to type eight now when I press the letter 8, notice that that 8 shows up in the bottom panel here. And that is the 8 that I just typed. Now the line is not 8 just yet. I would need to now press the enter button. So hover along the line press 8 then enter now notice that it has given me a line that is 8 millimeters then I need to go across and I'm going to press 8 again and press enter then remember I'm in perspective so even though these two lines are parallel it doesn't appear to be because I'm in perspective so I'm going to come back across and this is important that I hover and the line is red. So there we go. And I'm going to hit back here like that. So pretty much what we have here is the base of our model, right? Which is pretty much this section here. Okay. So that section there is what we just drew now. Is that a question? Yes, sir. Um, when mm. I do the hover and press eight, it doesn't work on my. Uh, you using the web version? No, sir. I have a twenty twenty one on my laptop. On a on a uh, PC uh, laptop. Um, let's yeah. see. So, when you when you click and move right and you can see you, you can see that um figure 
that's there changing down here so is that happening for you as well like wh while you're moving the line you see the length of the line increasing yes yeah, sir that's happening for you so when you when i type in a value once i start typing work on Oh, it changed in the later versions, it would see. No, okay. All right. Click, type, press enter. Right. I think I see why it doesn't do that. Um, I don't know. It works here. I'm able to do that. You're trying it and it's not working? Like once you click and start to move the pen and then you type a number, it doesn't pop into that little box down there? No, so the little box doesn't come up at all. Oh, so do you have do you have this white bar at the bottom of your SketchUp? Yes, sir. And you don't see a bar mark length on the right hand side? Oh, yes, I see it. Oh, okay. So go on again now and check if it works. Does it work? So it allows me to type it in, but it does not see. And then you press enter after you type it in? Yes, sir. And when you press enter, you don't see the line kind of jump to the length of it? Does, does that work now? So, no, I'm confused. <laughs> uh, all right, you want to share your screen? Okay, so I have to go back into Zoom on my desktop. Oh, because you're using like two different devices, right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, um, right. So, in while you do that, right? So what's supposed to... Is there anybody else that's getting the same issue, by the way? Like, once you're, when you're on the pen tool, you click once, uh, you start to move, um, and then you type, and then press enter, and it will just jump to the length. Um, is there anybody oh, that, that's sir. not... <laughs> mm -hmm. Sir, is she, um, is she zoomed all the way in? Because if you're not... Zoom all the way in, you're not going to see it. It's actually there. So it's not real quite. You're not getting it. Okay. That's a good point. So you zoomed all the way in? Okay, so I'm zoomed all the way in. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds like you're on two zooms now. So, right. So, you want to share your screen, or are you, um, or is it is it working? No. No, sir. I got it. Oh, so it's working now. Okay. Technology is just doing that thing that it normally does. You know, it does appear to not work and then work. Don't worry, you're not alone. All right, let's continue. So what we need to do is to use the push-pull tool to go up and that would allow us to get a shape. Roughly like that. 
all right so let's go so we're gonna use the push pull tool and if you remember where the push pull tool is it is this tool right here all right great so we're gonna grab the push pull tool and how tall should we make this well we can see here that the height is 96 um, millimeters so we're gonna hover over now we need to hover over it for it to be highlighted notice how when you hover over it it becomes highlighted with dots so you need to make sure that it's highlighted and you're gonna click once and move the mouse up and then you're going to type 9.6 percent all right great so now we have the basic shape as a matter of fact you can start to see the shape um, come along nicely here now we do need to draw this circle in the top and if we look at the top view we can see that the diameter of this circle is five millimeters so that would mean that between here and here is five millimeters now this is where the sketching skills will come in because we know that the circle is at the center of this um, box here we also know the full length of this box here and if this is at the center, then essentially you would need to subtract um, 8 from 5, uh, um, subtract 5 from 8, which you would get 3. And that would mean that each of these distances here is 1.5 and 1.5. So this is just from doing the simple math. Now, if we look back at our model that we have here, we know that the circle, this circle here, should land somewhere in the center here. We know that it's going to be in the center of this line here. And we know that these distances here should be 1.5 for each area. So in order to do that, we're going to use another tool in our arsenal. And this time we are going to use the tape measure tool. Now the tape measure tool is located here. That's the tape measure tool. And that tool is primarily used for you to set up reference lines. So you can know where offsets are, centers of things, um, distances. So we're gonna test out that tool now, right? Now, to use the tape measure tool, you're gonna click on it. And how the tape measure tool works is, in this case, we want to find the center of the shape now we could do that by simply drawing some diagonals. So I could draw a diagonal from here to here. And I could draw one from here to there. Now tape measures are reference shapes, reference objects. So this is actually not cut, this is not cutting the actual model. Now, just as a reference, I'm gonna undo this. You don't need to you don't need to follow me with this example here but if i seek to use the pencil tool to mark out my center let's say i draw a line here and i draw a line here right and you might say well this is doing the same thing as my tape measure but actually it's not because what this actually does is split the mesh so for example if i should use the push pull tool now you will notice that these are actually independent shapes because I've literally split the mesh. Now, so ideally I wouldn't want to split the mesh because all I really need to do is to find the center so I can put the circle. And I don't want to have to unnecessarily 
um, give myself more work by cutting this square just to get the center here. So I'm going to undo that. A better way would be to use the tape tool. And the tape tool will give us an outline, but it will not cut our mesh. So if I go to the push pull tool, notice that this is very much still a full mesh. Now I've gotten to the center of my object here. And I know that the diameter of this circle is five millimeters. So hence the radius would be 2.5. So what I can do now is to get my circle tool and your circle tool is located here. Okay, so your circle tool is located here. So we're gonna click the circle tool and we're gonna Put this at the center of these intersecting lines. Notice that it snaps and we're going to make this radius 2.5. All right, great. So this would represent where this circle is. Now, our next step is that this actually has a height of 1.7 meters. So we're going to grab the push pull tool now and push this up 1.7. All right, so you can kind of see now how it is coming together. Now, of course, there is one major component that we have to consider. This is how the inside of this Lego blocks looks. But obviously, um, if we look underneath, we can see that this is a solid block. But we need this block to be cut just like this. So it's going to require more um, sketching 3d sketching skills in order to to figure that out now the first thing we want to us we want to get is what about this hole in the bottom if i look underneath this now you can see that i don't have a hole here but there should be a hole like that so therefore you're going to need that distance here you're going to need the, the distances here in order to know where to cut this hole. Now, in order to get that, if we look carefully on this sketch, we can actually see that this edge here basically aligns with this line here. So we can actually use that assumption in order to know how wide this is. And we know how wide this is because we know the diameter of the circle. So that means this length would add up to 1.5. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw this 1.5. Now, to do this, let us try and explore yet another tool. Now, the tool that we're going to use is going to be our offset tool. And our offset tool is located right here. right and what the offset tool does well it does exactly what it says it does um, you know ideally I want to offset this entire edge and I want to offset it inward so all these four lines I want to offset inward so that it gives me an inner edge like that so in order to do that we're going to choose the offset tool choose that, and we're going to hover over the area that we want to offset and we're going to click once and move the mouse and notice that it's actually previewing that offset but we know that it should be 1.5 I'm going to press enter 
there we go so that gives us the square below now we still have a few things that we need to investigate so what exactly is this height so we would need this height here and how could we get that now once again we're going to rely on our sketching skills and if we look closely we can see that this distance here is going to be equal to this distance here and we know this distance we know that distance already because that was here 1.7 so that's what that distance is so hence we can assume that this inner part here is also 1.7 and if that is 1.7 and the total height of our box is 9.6 then that would mean that we would need to minus 1.7 and then that would give us the length here and of course that would give us a total of 7.9 so we know that we need to extrude this inner face upward 7.9 millimeters. So to do that, we are going to go back for our push-pull tool. But instead of pushing out, we want to be pushing upward. And we know that that upward push should be 7.9. All right. So now that is the correct length. Now, we do need to figure out what is the dimension here of this circle. Yeah. And once yet again, we're going to be turning to our 3D sketching skills. And, and these skills are things that um, anybody in the design Hmm. Was that a question I hear? Yeah, just one question. How much did you offset? Which one? For these sections here? For no debate. Because because what we did is um we did assume that this offset here is the same as this one, right? Are, are you seeing that? So, so yes, that is a line, right? Right. So we're assuming that, that this is aligned along with that. All right. Does does that answer the question? Yes, sir. All right. Cool. Cool. I feel should know. We should all have an idea of proportions, right? So now we can see that this distance here is the same as this distance here so we know that this is has an offset of 1.5 and 1.5 on this side so that is a total of three then now we know we would need to subtract that from the total dimension of the circle And the total dimension of that circle is 
five millimeters. So hence three from five, that would leave two. So that would mean that what would be left within here is actually a two millimeter diameter after we take these um, out of it. So that means that the diameter of this space is two. So what we need to do is do the same thing again. We need to draw a circle inside here and then we basically need to cut push that upward so that we can get the space inside this space here so to do that we are going to go for our tape tool again and we're going to just find the center of this space we're going to use the circle tool and go here and we know that this should be two millimeters all right actually no two millimeters is the diameter so the radius would actually be one millimeter there we go so now that is this space here is equal to that space there and we did that with simple proportion and math now this space needs to be pushed upwards to cut out this space here. So how high upwards does it need to go? Well, we need, we need to go to here. And we can see that this is aligned with that area there. So henceforth, it's the same depth Excuse as, me, um, as the top here. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, man, go ahead. Yes, sir. What was the radius of the circle we just uh, drew? Hold on. Remember, in terms of the measurement, guys. So, as I realize that I'm getting these questions, what I'm remembering is that, remember, we have the handout, right? So, I want us to... Right. There we go. Right. Right. I want us to have the handout on the screen while we watch, while we're going through the exercise. All right. So if I click exercise five here, there we go. So you see the diameter is going to be five millimeters. Or is it the rate? Radius or the diameter? No, hold on. Right. Right. The diameter is going to be five millimeters. All right. So remember, you can bring up the handout so that you can see some of the dimensions or do some of the estimations of the dimensions. All right. And everybody know where, how to get this, right? It's on the website. All right. Because you might have other dimension questions after this, especially when you go into this one. So instead of like pausing and saying the dimensions i just want you to teach a man how to fish right or a woman <laughs> all right did does that answer your question or kind of sir all right cool let's go and that distance was 1.7 so we're going to grab our push pull tool and we're going to go up 1.7 all right now basically we have our shape there um however we do have one element that is left and you can clearly see that the word lego is written on the top here so what we would need to do is we would need to go back to our large tool set and use the um the 3d text tool so to use that we just click it and just wait for a while and this will pop up so we're going to type the word l-e-g-o lego and i believe it's full caps 
then we want to choose a font um, I'm gonna use my font let us use a let's just use a font that everybody has so we're gonna use area and we're gonna make it Arial italic there we go and maybe we could do italic and bold so it's big so we're gonna choose okay now this text is kind of big here so basically it's asking us where we want to put it so we can just really plop it down anywhere and then we can start to resize this now so we're gonna click we're gonna highlight it and then we're gonna go to the scale tool now the scale tool is yet another new tool and that tool is located here once you click the scale tool you're gonna see these green boxes around it so essentially what you want to do is grab one of these corners here and make it let's click it once and then make it smaller to zoom in we're gonna click it once make it smaller and let's try and do that one more time all right now we're going to use the move tool and the move tool is located here and how the move tool work is you basically need to choose somewhere to grab the shape so i'm going to grab the shape right here and i'm going to click once and then notice that the, it's basically stuck so i'm going to zoom out zoom in and hover over maybe just somewhere random here like that then I don't want to go back for my scale tool and rescale that. There we go. Then go back for my move tool and grab it from one corner and kind of just put it somewhere. All right. Now if you're having trouble moving this in 3D, what you can actually do is go to camera and just switch to the top view. Then you can try and move this around and that should be way easier. Um, let's try grabbing it somewhere outside. And that may not work out so good um, let's try again. All right, now in order to test if our um, Lego is correctly done, there's another tool that I wanna introduce to you guys and that is called the section uh, tool. And to do the section tool, you're gonna, here is that tool here, we're gonna click on it. And what it actually does is create this section box here. So I'm gonna stick it right here and it's going to ask you to name it. I'm just going to leave it at the default name. And then what you want to do is use the move tool and just move this section. So I'm going to click to hold it and then move the section. And when you look, your section should be pretty much similar to this. So this is how you know that what you have done is accurate to the paper. Okay, so that is the basic um, premise of using SketchUp to create this shape. Now, what I want you guys to do now is to complete the exercise for today, which is drawing this shape. And all the dimensions are there. 
So you now are able to complete that shape, right? So I'm hoping that with this little exercise, you are armed with enough information to complete this model. All right. Right, guys? All right. Yeah, question? I didn't know how to do the text. Okay, all right. And Javin, you had a question as well? Text on the yes, sir. I wanted to ask. Um, yes, sir. I wanted to, I wanted to ask, um, how should we submit this? As in, like, what format? Or is it just a picture? Or what should we do? Good question. Um, This one is going to be both Okay, hold on. Let me ensure this time to enable it. Should be enabled already. I had start asking for a um for a picture along with the the model because we have such different versions of SketchUp now. Um, let's try it. Give me one second. Right. So you're going to submit a picture and the SketchUp file there, right? And the the picture that you submit should show um, from the well. The, the basic does take. I would say take a shot. Um, anyhow you want to show it, basically. <laughs> All right. Um, I would recommend from the bottom, but it's up to you. So when you click submit work, you're going to see it's uh, um, upload um, the SketchUp file and the image. Both of those files are what you would um, what you would upload. All right. Sir, the, the, um, the thing can manage the SketchUp file size. Yeah, man, it, it's not going to be, I mean, it's going to be like about, I don't know, 20 megs or so. So you, okay. you should be, yeah, man, so don't worry. We can manage the size. <laughs> All right, so um, I think that's going to just about do it for today's class, right? Um. I think you have everything you need. So I will look forward to this one. Anderson, you have a question? Sure, I'd like to see you after class. All right, no problem. As in a talk rather than text? Yes, sir. All right, no problem. No, I'm All right. So, yeah, so, so what? what? Um, yeah, what go was ahead. The, what was the class activity and where should we submit? Um, the last class activity is submitted via the link on the mirror board. All right. So, so when you go the, to the mirror board. The... Oh, no, no, no. Those are not to, su to be submitted. Those were to be placed on the board, not submitted in a form. But those placed on the board, um, if you can just group it in an area, uh, you will see where I paste one of the sketches there. And all you do is just put your name and ID number beside it. All right. Uh, what was that? You're chipping out. I was saying that the state, like a picture of it in SketchUp. That. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. A screenshot is fine. Uh, Windows key, shift, and S for the screenshot. Mm -hmm. all right um the oh oh no that was you okay so no more questions then uh you want to meet in a private room or yes sir that would be cool so i'm going to just quickly make a breakout room and you just i guess i'll just assign you to it i guess
All right, for the rest of us, you guys are free to go. All right. So have a Hi, good sir, rest of the week. Nice All right, and you have a good rest of the weekend. And I'll see you again next week. Remember, InDesign in is next week. So please, everybody should install InDesign ahead of time. All right. Bye, sir. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Um, from the window where I did last week, we can still submit to you, Bobby, sir. Oh, yes. So you have up to. The closeout for exercises will be not this week and the next week. So next week, Saturday, will be okay. the final day for collecting all outstanding exercises. Remember, it's a percentage a day. All right? Okay. Yes, sir. Percentage a day keeps the doctor away. All right, sir. All right. All right, cool. Sir, can we speak with you afterwards as well? Yeah, yeah, uh, Okay, cool. All right, so <clears throat> I will just create the breakout room and each of you just join one at a time. All right? Sir. Rather than creating multiple. Excuse All me, right, sir. So this, yeah, mm -hmm, go ahead. I right, said I submitted both my first and second exercises and I've not seen the grades for it as it, sir. It might be that you submitted it after the date that I marked it, all right? But don't worry, it's timestamped. So whenever you submit it, it will be timestamped. All right, sir. Mm -hmm. So I soon mark them. All right. I mark going forward, and then I make one last check before we close off the exercises, all right? So when I go back to make that check, those who that, that I didn't mark, I will I will mark those. Okay, creating a breakout room now. And I'm going to call this one and one and one. I'm going to call it talk to me. <laughs> there we go. All right, so who was the first person? I think it was um, Camille. Yes, Kimal, sir. Sorry. Uh -huh. Kimali. All right, Kimali. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to jump in that breakout room now. I'm going to assign you to that breakout room now. All right. Actually, no. I'm not going to assign you. I'm just going to leave it open. And that's it. All right, I'm going to jump over there now. So you can jump, follow me in a bit. Um, 